Supposing you had the chance to get rid of some of your worst nightmares, what would they be? My guest is here tonight to persuade me to banish the items on his list to room 101. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Spike Milligan. Let's have a look at your, your first choice, because your first choice is a rather unusual one. You have chosen to go into room 101, Portsmouth. <laughs> and that's... Ah! <laughs> what that's, is it? This is the HMS Victory, which is at Portsmouth. This is the signifier, this is the represent Portsmouth. Yes. Now, why do you hate Portsmouth? Well, I appeared on the stage there three times and I died the bloody death. <laughs> I could hear myself walking off the stage. <laughs> In fact, Peter Sellers was there and died, and he said, F*** you all! <laughs> what was the act that you did at the time? Do well, you remember? I, I wasn't very good, but I, I was, thought I was being different. I didn't have any play on music, but I would suddenly appear at the back of the stage and I'd bounce about the back. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I'd get, try to get to the microphone. I'd say, I must be a great disappointment to you all. <laughs> Please, God. Into context, there were a lot of strange acts going around. Do you remember any of these people when you were working on the musicals? This is a bit I like. <laughs> All that, and they died. Yeah. <laughs> How do you discover you can do that? You don't. You do it on the night impulsively. <laughs> in having a, 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 a poor opinion of Portsmouth because we've, we've dug out some Portsmouth tourist board stuff and they don't have a very high opinion of themselves either. <laughs> um, we've got um, an extract from one of the leaflets they hand out, the reasons why you should go to Portsmouth. They've said um, Portsmouth offers thousands of French restaurants. <laughs> then it says underneath, and they're only a few hours sailing away. <laughs> Come to Portsmouth, you can get to somewhere else from here. <laughs> All you got in Portsmouth was the clap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't get the clap, you no, got the... No, no, no. Thank you for reminding me, yes. <laughs> We've done some research. We've got a, a variety bill from the 50s when you were on at Portsmouth. Yeah. And I think you, you, you're making a cross for yourself here. It says, Spike, I hate Portsmouth Milligan. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there before, you see. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think we can put Portsmouth in for the simple reason that if Portsmouth wasn't there, the south coast would fray at the edges. <laughs> so Portsmouth has to be there as a... Because as a, as a, if they're not there, people in South Sea would just fall into the sea. Wouldn't they? Yeah. Not a bad thing for them to do. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm sorry, Spike, we can't put Portsmouth in the room 101. I'm sorry, it's not going in. Oh. Oh, all right, and in it goes. <laughs> I bow well, to... You just sunk the bloody victory. <laughs> Don't dig it up again like they did with Mary Rose. I went diving on that before it was dug up. How far down was it then? It was about 60 feet. And the water was very muddy. Why am I telling you all this? <laughs> and I saw some of the ribs sticking out there and I touched it. That was my only contact with the Mary Rose. Since then, he's got on without me. <laughs> Down yeah. a huge uh, shed in somewhere. Portsmouth, I think. It, it is in Portsmouth, yes. <laughs> well, let's have a look at that. Uh, let's have a look at your next item, Spike. Your next uh, item is, um, is Muzak. Muzak is distinctive in that it is the only background music service whose product is standard throughout the world. We're in 25 countries worldwide with 135,000 subscribers. 
We estimate on a daily basis approximately 80 million people daily hear Muzak. The inventor of Muzak committed suicide and I sent his wife a congratulatory telegram. <laughs> This is a, as you can see, is a lift. So those people who aren't sure what Muzak is, I think this demonstrates it neatly. <laughs> well, what, is, what is it, Spike, about music that you, that you really hate? Well, you go in the shop, you never hear the beginning of it, you get the middle and you bugger off before you hear the end. <laughs> That's about it, you know. If Muzak spreads, this is the sort of thing that could happen at the next Olympics. <laughs> There's also pop music you don't like, though, do you? It's not just music, it's, it's, it's crap, all... no. <laughs> all pop music is crap? Yeah. The last great music was by the Beatles. Well, well I'd agree I mean, with you there. Uh, who could have topped a number like yesterday? Yes. Yeah, a beautiful it's... tune, internal lyrics like this. It's, extra it's an extraordinary story how he came to compose it as well, because he, he woke up with this tune and he was convinced that it was a tune that somebody else had written that he'd heard somewhere. And he was going around saying, what's this tune? And eventually people said, well, we've never heard it. So he, he realised it was an original tune. Have you ever done that with a joke? When you think, that's such a good joke, somebody must have done it before. No. No. <laughs> music is, um, is interesting because there are no anecdotes about pop musicians. There's lots of anecdotes about jazz musicians that are, you know, there are funny people in jazz. Ronnie Scott uh, was uh, also a very fond of classical musician. I took him to the Albert Hall one night and they, were, they started playing the main movement of Beethoven's uh, Funeral Sonata. So it went on and on and on and on. <laughs> And Ronnie Scott leaned over to me and said, this bloke must have lived f***ing miles from the cemetery. <laughs> Let's have a vote from the audience. All those in favour of Muzak, say aye. <laughs> what a beautiful sound, peace and quiet. In it goes, in it goes to room 101. Now, your, your next item, Spike, is rather unusual. You, um, you spent six years, along with many other people, fighting in the war um, against Adolf Hitler, fighting for all our freedom, and the individual hate figure that you have chosen is Chris Evans. <laughs> A man, perhaps, who shouldn't wear red. <laughs> what, is it, what is it about Chris Evans that you don't like? He's without any... Talent. All of them doing is small talk. Yak, 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 yak. The smartest thing I ever heard him say was good morning. <laughs> he had that written for him. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you see, why pick on Chris Evans? Because he's, he's a disc jockey, but all disc jockeys are like this. All disc jockeys are without talent. I mean, Noel Edmonds, I can't stand Noel Edmonds. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why I had instant... I did never done any offensive to me. And the moment I saw him talking, I thought, you're an idiot, you know. You've got to feel some sympathy for him. I mean, look at him. <laughs> I mean, he's got the look of a comedian, <laughs> but without the talent or the, or the writing ability or the timing. Well, the best I can... <laughs> I guess I wish it was an early death. <laughs> Is that really the best you can wish him, Spike? <laughs> Couldn't you, like, wish for him to have a happy birthday or something? Yeah. <laughs> Leprosy. <laughs> People who have ginger hair, we've got to feel sorry for them, because there is a, there is a, it's difficult, if you've got ginger hair, to be taken seriously, isn't it? <laughs> 